Hi, I'm Adam, and this is ZX81 Plus 38 Cases. Let's get started. So I wanted to keep you all up to date with how it's going with my case designs and give you an opportunity to vote on which one you would like to see come to fruition. So today I'm going to present you four case designs. Three are my own and one is by Patrick. So Patrick's one he'll be making anyway. So the ones for vote are for mine. Uh, two cases I will be showing you today are number one, a very heavily Gigatron inspired case. Number two, an all-in-one keyboard and motherboard case. It's wood and open. And number three of my designs is a 3D printed case, all-in-one integrated keyboard and monitor. And obviously, last but not least, I'll be showing you Patrick's case, which is very true to the spirit of the ZX81. So let's check out these now. Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay, the one-stop shop for all your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. PCBWay offer high quality PCBs at affordable prices with a wide range of options for your specific project requirements. Whether you're a hobbyist, a startup or an established company, PCBWay can help bring your ideas to life. PCB prototype the easy way with PCBWay.com. Let's get started with the Gigatron inspired case. If I spin it around, you can see the power and video connections. Note that I've not drawn all of the connections or components. And if I keep spinning around here, you'll see the expansion slot. So back to the front. Here I added a slot for the keyboard connection. At the moment, I plan on using the same cable as in the previous video and just feeding it through the slot. But there is nothing to stop a connector being added here. I added this text with the intention that it would be laser etched into the wood, although of course it could also be a sticker. And spinning it around here reveals the joystick connector. Let's take a quick look at how this is constructed. Now, please don't jump on me for the organization of these components. After the 3D printed case in the last video, this is only the second thing that I've constructed in Fusion 360. Right, let's turn off the glass and the lid. The PCB is missing the tracks and silk screen as this is how it exported from KiCad. And although it doesn't look as pretty like this, I only really need it here for the physical sizing. To help fit the lid in place, I've included this cutout around the outer top edge and rounded these edges here to help guide the lid into place when fitting it. Right, let's hide the PCB and look at how it should be fixed into place. I'll also hide these components. The PCB will be screwed into place into these blocks of wood, which are 3mm high. Now I'd very much like your feedback as to how you think these should be machined or cut out. Should they simply be a block like this? or with a larger base and chamfered edges like this, which would give each block a greater surface area to be glued to the base. Also, what do you think if this was to be machined out of a single block of wood in a CNC machine? Would you bother with these chamfered edges? Please leave your feedback in the comments. Right, let's now hide the base and switch the glass and the lid back on and take a closer look at it. So the hole for the keyboard connector is here. Here is the hole for the joystick connector. The electrical connections will fit through this large hole. I did toy with the idea of having individual holes but figured it would be easier to construct like this. And finally, the hole for the expansion slot. Then underneath, you'll see the cutout that is inverse to the base. And again, I've added these rounded edges to help guide the lid into place when fitting it. Okay, so that's my heavily Gigatron inspired design, which would require a separate keyboard case. Before I move on, let's take a quick look at some renders. And here is the modified version of the case that I 3D printed in the last video. It's a very basic wooden design. The bottom is flat with the top and PCB being at a slight angle. And I've included some text here, which could either be a sticker or laser etched onto the wood. There is also some artifacting shown here, which is not intentional and is a byproduct of the label. If anyone else experiences this in Fusion 360 or knows how to stop it, please drop a comment below. And on the bottom of the case, of course, I've included the same image that I did on the bottom of the PCB. Right, let's hide the PCB and switches. Another change I made over the 3D printed one from the last video was to increase the size of the fixing posts. And I decided to add quadrants in each corner. And instead of small posts in the center, I went with this. My reasoning was twofold. Firstly, the small diameter wooden post would be harder to fix into without snapping it off the base. 
And secondly, if this was to be machined out of a single block of wood, I don't have to worry about the tooling size fitting between the post and the edge of the case. Right, before I move on, let's take a quick look at some renders. The next design is an all-in-one open case and is a hybrid between the Gigatron inspired wooden case and wooden keyboard. I made a subtle tweak to the front of the keyboard by chamfering this edge so it's a little bit more ergonomic. Taking a look at the back, you can see that this is butted up against the keyboard case. The drawing shows a line running between the two parts as I drew them separately, but this would be a single case machined out of a single block of wood in one go or 3D printed in one go. The PCBs are mounted the same as before, so nothing really has changed there. Let's take a quick look at some of the renders. For my next design, I wanted an all-in-one portable that had a built-in monitor. For this, I was very much inspired by the Commodore SX64, and after a little play, I ended up with a design that looked nothing like the Commodore SX64. Oh well. I needed a small monitor and found this one on Amazon for £25. It has a composite video input. Note that this monitor requires a 60Hz composite signal. Fortunately, this jumper on the ZX81 Plus 38 allows you to select between 50Hz and 60Hz. Before I could create a design for the case, I needed a 3D model for the monitor and I created this. And of course, it gets the obligatory classic 3D Monster Maze graphic added to it. As I'm still learning how to use Fusion 360, I struggled a bit with the arm that supports the monitor, and in the end, I just fudged it with this static part. Also note the artifacting that is present on the rear of the screen from the graphic that I placed on the front. Again, if anyone knows what causes this or how to stop it, please let me know in the comments. Once I had the basic 3D model of the monitor, I set about drawing my case design, and this is how it turned out. It's an all-in-one design with an open keyboard to show off the keyboard PCB, and it has a closable monitor on the top. The design is intended to be 3D printed. The keyboard is basically the same as the wooden one, but since I drew that I've played with the switches a bit and I've made them Cherry MX Reds, but of course it could be any type fitted. I rounded the corners of the case to try and match the monitor casing, and when not in use this monitor folds flat. Around the back we've the expansion port and to the side the connections. For the monitor video input, I was thinking of soldering a cable directly to the underside of the ZX81 Plus 38 PCB and bypassing the need to bring a cable external to the unit. Power is a bit more tricky since the monitor's working voltage is 9 to 32 volts DC and the ZX81 Plus 38 is only 5 volts. So what I'm thinking is a single power connector on the rear of the device that takes say 9 or 12 volts in and then this is used to power both the monitor and a buck converter and the buck converter will drop the voltage to 5 volts for use with the ZX81 Plus 38 PCB. If I were to go with that, then this cutout can in theory be smaller and only needs to expose the two center sockets that are used for the cassette recorder. This would also prevent somebody plugging in a USB connector. Let's take a closer look at how the monitor is attached. Right, I'll turn off the screen, but first, whilst I'm here, let's spell screen correctly. So get rid of the screen, get rid of the bracket, and get rid of the base. Here you can see what I've done. I've made a very small indentation in the lid that the monitor can be fixed into, say with double-sided tape or hot melt glue. Hiding the rear lid reveals the same sort of layout as before. I've got these little blocks to fix the PCB to, and I feel that they will be more substantial and less prone to snapping than if I was to print small little posts. So that's an all-in-one ZX81 Plus 38 with integrated monitor. Let's take a look at some renders. And last but not least is a wooden case design by Patrick that is true to the spirit of the original ZX81. He says he plans to build this from ash and stain it. Patrick sent me some sketches that I've entered into Fusion 360 to get a feel of how it will look. Following on from my last video, here is an update on the shipping of the PCBs to Patrick in light of Royal Mail's cyber attack. The PCBs have finally made it to the US and I'm getting super excited to see the result. So now over to you, which one of my case designs would you like to see come to life? Please leave your comments down below and of course don't forget to vote in the poll that's running on the community tab on my YouTube page. As always, take care and see you next time. Bye.